spark plugs, a drop spark plug is a useless spark plug to you. So we are going to take every precaution we can to make sure that our spark plugs do not drop on the floor. We've got our mats, but then we're also going to add this. This is also protection to our cylinder fins here so that we can place things and uh, doesn't, it doesn't dent anything. Once again, it's also for visibility. Dark tools wouldn't show up on this background. All right, so this engine is Continental O200. We've got four cylinders horizontally opposed, two spark plugs per cylinder, four on top, four on bottom. We are going to be replacing all of them today. If we were to be just taking them out, we'd have to gap them um, and inspect them. Uh, today we're just going to be replacing them in their entirety. So first we're going to take off the spark plug leads. You notice that one. It's already been removed. We're taking this off so that we can remove the spark plugs later. Uh, we'll go to the bottom ones afterwards. Now this Cessna 150, it's a really great light trainer. Uh, it's tricycle or nose gear. Uh, as opposed to conventional or tail wheel. Um, Two-seater, and it's a great for preliminary instruction all the way to private pilot certification. A big important thing along with laying out the tools and everything is laying out a plan before you start. Uh, similar to a lesson plan that you get perhaps from a CFI, uh, you can lay out a lesson plan for mechanic work, you can lay out just some sort of plan for everything you're doing. As I unscrew this over here, that checklist, so we filled in our tack time, we've got the checklist here, and then things that we're going to maintain. Um, our work area, our tools, everything, stuff to keep track of um, as we go through our work. If we wanted to leave this at any point and get back to it, once again we'd cover that up with a sheet, but we would want to kind of assess where we are, perhaps mark with a flag a, a piece of masking tape if there's something that you think the next mechanic might not get. Obviously the mechanic's going to get the fact that this is here, but perhaps they, if you failed the safety wire before you left, that might not be something they check, so that's something that you want to um, let them know about. Onto the lower spark plugs down here. Set that. Those are good to hang there, it's fine. So, now, removing the spark plugs themselves can be a bit hard for some, it does take some force. We've got a long drive here. Obviously, um, the longer that you've got of a handle here, the easier it'll be. Um, so, we've got this that fits on. Luckily, this also maintains the spark plug when you take it out, um, so that helps us. We're gonna fit that on there, and then, this would be a bad angle for me, right? Pushing up from here, that's not helpful, especially for someone who maybe has a bit more trouble taking these spark plugs out. So I'm gonna have it up here. Pulling is easier than pushing, and then the downward force is also gonna help me. So I'm gonna set that up. Be removed. So I'm gonna set this on there, get it on. All right, so if I was pulling like this, there's not a problem. Not only am I pulling, untightening, but I'm also pulling force down like this. That's not what I want. So I'm going to have the same thing when I took off the cowling, unscrewing, I had two hands. I'm going to have two hands here. One of them is to counteract the pressure of this downwards hand. So I'm going to push this in and slightly up to keep this uh, spark plug stationary while I unscrew it. So I've got one hand here, and here I go. You, you feel it break, and then it gets much easier. So we'll unscrew this. I prefer to not use the tool and take it out by hand. Now, here's this. We are replacing the spark plugs, so we could just get rid of it right now. What we are going to do is place it here so that we can associate it with what cylinder it came from. Now look, when I first took that off, it was like this, with that washer in place. Don't, uh, don't leave washers, gaskets on there. If we left a gasket, say, from the previous uh, filter, which could happen. That'd be a problem to put on the next one. So we want to make sure that that's all clean here. So going on to the next spark plug. Get it there. Force to break it. 
not not break the spark plug, but to break the uh, the seal there. And then, like I said, I prefer to unscrew by hand. We'll set that there. <clears throat> um, when we were planning this oil change and uh, spark plug replacement, obviously it's not something that has to be done together, an oil change and spark plug change. Um, but there's a matter of when you're doing some maintenance on the airplane, you look to see what else needs to be done. So the spark plugs needed to be changed and so did the oil, so why not do them together? Um, it's helpful to only have to uncowl everything once um, and do all that work in one instance, especially if it's something uh, fairly small that you can do at the same time within the span of an hour or so, which is what we planned. this. Um, this video is being done in live time that it takes. Uh, the only things that we did beforehand were taking off the cowling, that's top and bottom, and then we got some spark plugs out of their packaging. Uh, that's just cutting the packages open and laying them out there. Everything else is being done in the time that it would take to do it. So here we go with the bottom spark plugs. There's more uh, in the way of bottom spark plugs that we're going to get up there. Now look, as you've seen, it takes me a, a good amount of force to be able to break this and it normally kind of has a, a jerk sort of thing. So if I did this here, there's possibilities of hitting this, hitting this. So I'm going to do it hopefully in a place that it doesn't, if, if I were to carry through with my actions, it's not going to hurt me. Same, same thing if we're unscrewing anything really. We don't want to do it in a way that would damage anything if you continue going around. So we're going to pull up here instead. There's that. Now when I pull this out, I'm gonna be careful. Spark plug could come out, we don't want that. Uh, it could come out immediately, we don't want that. Looks like we'll get the uh, thing back up. And we're actually going to take advantage of the fact that we've got this long socket here to bring out the spark plug together. And once again, we're maintaining that that washer uh, was there as well. Um, I'm going to make a note to myself that per cylinder, the lower spark plug is going towards the aft the end of the airplane. Since we've got these two here now. Meanwhile, our oil is still dripping, which is what we want. That's good. Now, oil does six things in an airplane. Uh, the more uh, the common ones to recall are that it cools, uh, it lubricates, and it cleans. So when we put in oil, you'll notice that it's an amber color, and you'll notice that the oil dripping out here is black. So that's it cleaning the engine um, as it cycles through. So every pilot should be able to describe their engine um, in some way. Uh, the basics to know are type, engine manufacturer and type. So this is a Continental O200. Horsepower, this is 100 horsepower. Number of magnetos, we have two, right and left. Number of spark plugs, we have eight. Spark plugs per cylinder is two, and we have four cylinders. You could call this a four cylinder, horizontally opposed internal combustion engine. Uh, internal combustion means there's those four cycles of an internal combustion engine. Intake, compression, power, and exhaust that the airplane goes through um, in order to move the propeller. There we go. And we'll just take this around, removing these perfect.
notice that I've got a hand here. I could be doing this type of thing. We're at a point now where I don't need to oppose that force with the other hand. Instead, I'm using it kind of dual action. I'm using it um, to keep this from hitting anything in my engine. And I'm also using it just to kind of uh, keep the wrench going along. And last spark plug in here. That's that. Now I'm watching the propeller. Another uh, thought prior to starting this was to mask off or somehow put a towel over the propeller. Um, once again, for a dual reason, for its own safety so that it doesn't get scratched or dented by any of our tools and also for the safety of the mechanics working around it. Uh, say I'm down here, instead it's easy to lift up and hit my head on the propeller if I'm not looking out for it. So always look up before you move, especially if you're underneath an airplane working on the engine or anything like that. So our spark plugs have now been removed. We'll look to the new spark plugs now. So come over here. My hands aren't that dirty, but since I've got these nice rags here, they're new spark plugs. I don't want to get any grease oil on them. Just a quick uh, rub here. And now we can proceed. So here's our new spark plugs that we laid out. We've gapped them. Notice how there's a perfect circle there with gaps in between. If it was smooshed like a football or you couldn't see the gap or the gap was too wide, those are all reasons for concern. Now you'll notice that they've all had at least some of this anti-seize applied. So when we're doing so, we're gonna take, it, it's like a little paintbrush here. We're gonna go around and it's on the bottom two to three fret threads. We're just gonna come here and sort of paint it on there, on all of them. So paint it all the way around for all of these spark plugs here, these new spark plugs. If you drop a, a box of new spark plugs, even if they're still in that container, those are all done. Uh, dropping them can crack the porcelain that's inside and causes them, uh, that's not really something, it's something that is kind of difficult to observe. You have to look in, you see the white in there. Um, you'd have to look for cracks and some cracks aren't even viewable. It, it just, um, you need to take the loss of money or whatever it is and just accept that um, a damaged or dropped spark plug is not useful um, anymore for your own safety. So we've got these washers going back on and now we're going to take our new spark plugs like we've got here and take them over. I'm okay with taking them one at a time here. We've got our rolling cart which is nice but I'm not going to try and grab them all, move them over here for that same reason that dropping one is just too much of a loss for us. So, We've got our new spark plug and we've got our torque wrench over here. It's an electric torque wrench. So we're going to turn it on. You can see. It runs a little test. We want it set to 30 foot pounds. It's been set to 30 and then since this has multiple um, settings, we're also going to check it says foot pounds. FTLB, great. And it is tightening as we want it. So we're going to place this uh, spark plug on. We've got top and bottom. Um, we are going to thread them. We're going to thread them all before we um, tighten any of them. This is, uh, like we said, a couple of reasons. Leaving those holes open is not something that we would want to do. Also, um, if somebody else comes in, they, they can kind of just rest assured all the spark plugs are in. It helps maintain them all. We wouldn't want to have like the top ones in and the bottom ones not in. And then it just it just leads to confusion if anybody but you is doing the uh, following mechanics. So we're going to take advantage of this uh, that we use for removing the spark plugs, this socket, especially for the bottom ones here, because it holds them in very nicely and it helps us thread them correctly. It can be a little bit difficult to get these bottom ones started. It takes the correct angle. Uh, just takes some time to get them going. So just a 
uh, socket has a bit of a spring to it, we're going to push in as we tighten it, making sure it's threaded correctly. That looks good, and that'll be uh, torqued later. Uh, here is a, a, a gapping tool. You'll notice those wires are of different thicknesses. That's what we would use to gap them, uh, which, which we did before. <clears throat> Out of the video. Uh, we're putting in these bottom ones as they are more difficult. Uh, we've still got our oil draining, but in, it's done gushing out any sort of oil. It's just kind of dripping. If we were any, in any sort of hurry, we'd leave that, um, uh, we, we would have let it, we would have stopped it a while ago, uh, since the drips of oil don't matter to us. The only reason we've left it going is because uh, we've been doing other work here, but actually once we get these spark plugs in, we will release that, and as part of it, um, we're going to make sure the quick drain is fully closed. Now, if we take this hose out, even if the quick drain was open still, oil would still be dripping out because there's no oil left, or sorry, oil would not be dripping out because there's no oil left in the engine. That could mislead someone and make them think, oh, the quick drain closed, it's fine, and then they pour in the oil and all their new oil comes out, which we wouldn't want. So we're going to make sure that drain is closed. Um, as soon as we finish with these spark plugs.